Hi, my name's Enzo, and I'm just going to be presenting on an app that we developed called MetaBase DTA. So the aims uh, when making this app were to make an updated Bayesian version of the R Shiny app, Meta, uh, Meta DTA, uh, that's accessible to statisticians and other researchers who don't yet uh, have the sufficient programming expertise to be able to do uh, these analyses uh, using R, for example, and that's also still useful for people who can use uh, software like R. Um, and we wanted uh, it to lower the user burden since no programming is needed uh, so that researchers have more time to focus on the interpretation of the results and putting the results uh, into context. Um, so for meta-analysis of test accuracy, uh, often there's insufficient or inappropriate uh, statistical models that are used. Uh, so we hope that this app will uh, sort of encourage the use of uh, more appropriate methods and improve the uptake of them and lower the time interval between uh, new methods being uh, proposed and then being routinely used uh, in applied papers in practice uh, and to help incorporate, emphasize and improve other non-modeling aspects of the analysis, such as quality assessment and risk of bias and the presentation and interpretation of results. Um, and yes, yeah, so for example, uh, people have more time to write the discussion uh, to make more nuanced conclusions. Um, it's less likely to lead to strong statements not being supported by evidence being made. Um, and it will help reinforce the use of practices which are known to be better, yet not routinely done by statisticians uh, due to lack of time, for example. And the app also has some appropriate restrictions in place. For example, there's no option to report credible or confidence intervals without the corresponding prediction intervals. Um, and it uh, vi it helps visualize and plot priors before uh, the analysis, um, and it automatically plots a uh, model once after diagnostics. So I'm just going to demo the app now. Open the app. Uh, you get greeted with this home page, uh, and then from here on the left, there's a panel uh, which uh, has various options. So there's the data tab, which we'll go through first. So this is where you upload your data, and we're just going to be using the default data sets, which are sort of example data sets, which are already in there when you open the app. And we're going to be using the example with quality assessment and covariates. Yeah, you can upload your data using this box here that says, please select a file and you just upload the CSV. And you just need to make sure that it's formatted correctly. And on the right, there's the instructions for how to format it. And then this just gives a description of the, of the example data set. So um, it uses data from a systematic review that investigates the accuracy of a test for uh, screening dementia uh, called the uh, informal questionnaire cognitive decline in the elderly. And this is what the data set looks like, the analysis. Uh, so you've got some categor categorical covariates which end in dot cat and uh, continuous covariates which end in dot CTS. So now I'm going to go to the perfect gold standard tab. So the this in this tab you can run um, models which assume a perfect reference test or old standard. Uh, so in the meta-analysis sub-tab, you've got the standard uh, bivariate model, it's often called. Um, and you could, if the first thing you want to do is just run the prior model. So the default priors are sort of the closest you can get to having a uniform prior. So the sensitivity of specificity, we're just assuming a 95% prior interval between 5 and 95%. And it also plots them for you here. And you can download these plots uh, if you want to change the size of them. Uh, you've also got more advanced options. So if you click on this box, you can change the stand sampler options. And here you can actually change the prior distributions. The next tab is where you run the model. So I've already run this, but if you press click to run model, uh, it will run the model for you. And then in the study level outcomes tab, you've just got the data set again, but um, you've also got the percentage weight, the uh, weights for the sensitivity and specificity. So this just shows how much each study uh, contributes to the summary estimate. In the parameter estimates tab, you've got um, your parameter estimates. So sensitivity, specificity, the log logistic transforms, uh, diagnostic odds ratio, and you've also got the parameters at the bottom for the uh, for the HS rock model. The bivariate model is equivalent to the HS rock model, but there's no covariates at least. 
and then you've got a parameter for, for red man tab. So if you're using this app uh, as part of a Cochrane snack review mirror analysis, uh, you'll need to use red man. So you can export these parameters into red man to create your plots. And finally, you've got the model diagnostics tab. Um, so th these are, this shows you the uh, sample diagnostics first. Uh, so you want your divergent transitions and iterations, uh, which exceed the max tree depth to be zero, which they are here. Your R hat to be less than 0.5, which they are, it will warn you if they aren't. Um, and then you've got your posterior density plots and trace plots. So these are all normal and you can, they're a bit small, so you can change the size here. Um, and you want these uh, to be bimodal, uh, sorry, not bimodal, unimodal, which means they got one, which have one peak, uh, which they do. So they're okay. And the trace plots, uh, you want these to, uh, you want both chains uh, or however many chains you run to be overlapping like this. Uh, which they are, so these are all fine. And they should be sort of randomly, uh, the values uh, as the iterations go on uh, should be like uh, oscillating like this, uh, not sort of going off to a, a tangent or anything like that, or just having two chains that don't overlap. Um, and often, you know, if that happens, you'll get, you also get a bad R hat as well. And then on the right, you've got the summary receiver operating characteristic plot. So, so this shows uh, your summary estimate there. Uh, and then the uh, black dots, the study, spe study specific uh, observed sensitivity specificity for each study. And then the gray shaded region is the 95% uh, credible region. And then you've got the dotted line around that, which is the 95% prediction uh, region. And then if you click it, you can click on the study uh, specific points uh, to get the information about each study. And a pop up box will appear. Uh, and you've also got various settings here. Uh, so we can display quality assessment scores, for example. So if we just do that for both risk of bias and applicability concerns, it's loading, you can see that these like pie charts will appear. And if you click on them, um, the information for that specific study will show up. So uh, you've got the risk of bias and applicability concerns there. Uh, it'll show whether it's low, high, or unclear. Then you've got uh, the forest plots tab. So uh, this just shows the forest plots for sensitive specificity uh, for each study. And then finally, you've got the prevalence tab. So this sort of puts the results into context. So you can select a number of patients and choose a disease prevalence in the population. So let's just say we think it's going to be 10%. And it will show you the number of people if you get uh, sort of disease and test positive. Uh, so the number of, sort of true positives you have, then false negatives, false positives, etc. Okay. So the next tab is meta-regression. Uh, so with this app, you can conduct a univariate meta-regression using either one categorical covariate or one continuous covariate. So here, in this example, we've already run it using the test threshold as an example. Um, and again, we got the priors, which we just used the default. Um, and then we're in the model. Then the study level outcomes tab uh, looks basically the same as the meta-analysis tab. And then the parameter estimates, well, now there's more parameter estimates. So uh, for each group, so we've got four groups because we've got four different thresholds observed in the study, and we've got four sets of parameter estimates. So it shows you the sensitivity specificity for each one. Um, and then the first box is the shared parameters. So uh, the between study correlation and standard deviation, uh, or the between study heterogeneity parameters, are going to be the same between the groups, but the means are going to be different. And here you've got a table of the pairwise accuracy differences and ratios. Um, so here, for example, for comparing threshold 3.3 to 3.4, we can see that the difference in sensitivities is uh, about 10% and the interval doesn't contain zero, which means there's evidence that uh, there is a difference in the sensitivities between these two thresholds. And it does that for each pairwise comparison. Um, and because we've got four categories here, we've got six comparisons. And this is particularly useful if you've got, um, if you want to do a comparison between different tests. So you can actually, this example doesn't have multiple tests, but uh, you can use this app to compare uh, 
different tests that are using the same study to each other. Um, so to do a multiple test uh, merit analysis. Um, we could actually do that with the reference tests uh, if we wanted to compare reference tests. So um, yeah, we won't do that for the purposes of this example. It's got the threshold. Um, and then you also got yeah, the model diagnostics tab, which is exactly the same as before. Um, and all the uh, sampler diagnostics are satisfactory. And on the right, the, with the SRC plot now, we've got um, multiple points because we got a summary estimate at, for each group. We've got four groups. And again, we can click on the study specific points uh, to get the information from each study. And we've also got this new plot, which shows you the, uh, let's make it a little bit bigger. Uh, so th this shows you uh, just the accuracy plotted against the categorical covariate on the x-axis, which is the threshold. And each one of these uh, points is the, summary is the summary estimate. And the bars represent the 95% uh, confidence into uh, credible interval. So I've also run a subgroup analysis here. Again, I've, I've used the same um, categorical covariate to do that, so the threshold. And yes, yeah, so we got our priors, run the model, study level outcomes tab, it's the same. Parameter estimates tab is a little bit different now because we haven't got shared parameters because it, it essentially the subgroup analysis runs a separate model for each group. Um, so yeah, we've, we've got this table which is split by the category threshold. And we don't have one for 4.1 this time because that only had one study, so we can't run a subgroup analysis on it, but we, we can for the rest of them. And the SRC plot on the right looks uh, really similar to before, uh, except that, yeah, we haven't got one for 4.1. We've just got that point there, purple point, but not the summary estimate. And the accuracy versus covariate plot uh, has the same form as before. And in the model diagnostics tab, uh, this is also the same as the previous tab. And all the uh, sampler diagnostics are satisfactory for this as well. And we can also run uh, a, a, a meta regression for a continuous covariate. Um, so if we choose prevalence as an example. Uh, we'll select the, so by default, it will, it will send to the covariate at its mean, and we can select the value to calculate the pooled summary estimates at. So let's say we wanted to study uh, the pooled summary estimates for uh, a prevalence of 0.1, so 10%. We can run the prime model first. Okay, so we got our priors. So we got the intercept and coefficients. Um, and you can see more details about how these prior distributions are formed uh, in the associated preprint paper, which is linked to in the homepage. Uh, but basically they're chosen to be uh, as sort of weakly informative to stabilize computation, but not too informative. Um, yeah, so in the next tab, we can run the model like before. And yeah, when you run the model, a pop-up box will appear to just remind you to check uh, the model diagnostics tab. Okay, so the study level outcomes tab is going to be the same as before. Uh, and we've got our parameter estimates. So um, the first box will have the parameters which depend on the value of the coefficient. So you've got your summary sensitivity uh, for a prevalence of 0.1 and what that is and other parameters. And then you've got the parameters which don't depend on the value, uh, such as the HSROC parameters, uh, just what the coefficient is for the logit sensitivity and specificity and the intercept terms. 
and yeah, the between steady correlation heterogeneity parameters. And then on the right, the SRC plot will look different now. So uh, the study specific points are shaded according to the value of the continuous covariate. And then you've just got your summary estimate in the middle, which corresponds to uh, the value that you selected here to calculate the summary estimates at. Um, and in your accuracy versus covariate plot, because it's a continuous covariate, it just plots the relationship between the value of that covariate and the, and the sensitivity and specificity on the y-axis. Right, so the last tab we got is the imperfect gold standard tab. So um, this runs a latent class model, which doesn't assume a perfect reference test. And when you run these models, um, I would recommend choosing informative primes for the reference test, because usually we know information about the reference test. Uh, just for the purposes of this tutorial, I've just left it as the uniform priors. Um, yeah, so we run that, and as before, we get the priors for each of the reference tests and the index test. And then we run the model. Then in the study level outcomes tab, uh, we don't have the study weights this time because uh, it doesn't calculate them for this type of model, uh, but the rest looks the same. Then in the parameter estimates, we've got the index test parameters first and the summary estimates for that uh, and then you've got the second table which shows the uh, summary estimates for each of the reference tests and because we because we've run it uh, assuming we've run this model assuming fixed reference tests between studies so in, in the first tab you have various options mm -hmm. here um, so we're not assuming conditional independence between tests uh, that's usually not a reasonable assumption to make in clinical practice because uh, it assumes that conditional on the disease status that the test results aren't correlated to each other between the different tests. Uh, but we've assumed that the reference tests are fixed and that the index tests are not fixed, so they're random effects. Um, yeah, so going back to the parameter estimates tab, uh, we don't have some parameters for the reference tests here. That's why it's, it's just a dash there, because it's fixed. Uh, here, we don't have any between study correlation or uh, other parameters, because these are random effect parameters. But we do have them for the index test over here. And the model diagnostics tab, this looks similar to it does, how it did for the other models before. Um, and we can see the sampler diagnostics are all satisfactory. We've also got the model fit here. So uh, this shows you how well the model fits there. So we've got the deviance, which is 44. And you can use this to compare different models to each other. Um, then you've got the correlation residual plot. So uh, for this plot, all the line, all the uh, bars should overlap with the uh, zero line here, line of unity, uh, which it does. Um, not the line of unity, yeah, the line is uh, just a zero line. And then you've got the table probability residual plot. Uh, and again, the bars should ideally overlap or, be as, or the points should be as close as possible uh, to the zero lines. And then you've got your posterior density plots and trace plots as we did before. So if we just make these plots bigger so we can actually see them. So yeah, we can see these are all okay, so they're all unimodal. And the trace plots are also fine. Yeah, they're all okay. Because they all overlap, basically. It shows good mixing. Uh, and yeah, on the right, as we did for the other tabs, we've got an SRC plot. Uh, so this shows you the summary estimates uh, for the index test, which is red, the red dot here and um, the reference tests. And then we've also got the study specific estimates for the index test. So these aren't observed estimates this time. They're actually uh, they're actually like the model estimates because we, we're not assuming uh, that, uh, that the reference test is 100% uh, perfect. So uh, the model actually estimates what the sensitivity and specificity uh, should be for the index test. And for the reference test, because they're fixed, we only have a summary estimate. We don't have specific points. And as before, there's various options uh, that you can choose for this plot. Uh, just going back to the model setup and priors tab, if we try and run a model without assuming a perfect reference test. OK, so I've just run a model uh, not assuming fixed reference tests anymore. So the reference tests 
and index tests. There seem to be random effects. And if we go to the model diagnostics tab, we can see that although there isn't any uh, divergent transitions or iterations which exceeded maximum tree depth, our hats are all good. If we go down to the uh, posterior density plots, we can see that some are bimodal. So like this one, for example, here and on the right, we've got two peaks. Uh, so this isn't okay. Uh, we can't really use this. It means it's not identifiable. And uh, having more prior information can sometimes help with this. So if we put more prior information for the reference test, it might help. Uh, in this case, it still didn't seem to help much. Uh, you can see that in the uh, in the associated paper. So, so just to summarize, we created a web application. Uh, we're using R-Shiny and SAN, which has the benefits of previously proposed applications and addresses uh, several limitations of them. It is accessible to researchers who don't have the programming expertise required to fit complex test accuracy meta-analysis models, uh, but, it's all, but it's also suitable for experienced analysts. And we anticipate that MetaBase DTA will appeal to a wide, wide variety uh, of researchers uh, due to its user friendliness. Thanks for listening. Oh.